You've probably heard the name before, Sister Mary Roberts, the one for whom our outreach to the poor is named. She was a sister here at Sacred Heart for many, many years, and she had an agreement with Father Putnam, who was the pastor here before me, that when he left the parish, so would she. And she kept good to her word. I don't really know her at all. I think we've met maybe once or twice, um, because she took off as soon as I showed up. I have a really kind of scary reputation, I think. But it's like, so she took off when I got here. But apparently what she always used to say about this time of year is that, my goodness, we just laid him in the manger. Now we're already nailing him to the cross. And I think there's definitely some accuracy to that because isn't it incredible? Like the Christmas season has just come to an end, right? We literally just got the nativity scene down on Thursday. In fact, I still got a couple poinsettias behind me because they're pretty, you know? We don't want the, the whole sanctuary completely empty. But the thing that's crazy, my friends, Ash Wednesday, one month from today. Like it's amazing how quickly that's upon us. And last Sunday, as I was standing greeting people at the 1030, little guy, I'd say probably like 10, 11, he's like, when is February 14th? I'm like, yeah, he goes, it's so boring. There's no chocolate. There's no TV. I'm like, it's going to be okay, buddy. I understand. And his dad made him come back and apologize. And I was like, here's the thing, buddy. I, I get it, you know? It's sort of like when a little guy is crying because it's cold outside. It's like he just, you know, he doesn't have the words to express it yet. So he's just crying. We all feel that way. It's just he's giving voice to it by his tears. The little guy is kind of expressing what I think all of us sort of feel when Lent is on the horizon, right? No chocolate, no TV. It's just so boring. Now, what I would say is, even though that is an understandable reaction, right? When we know that we have to tell ourselves no on things, we kind of cringe a little bit inside. We don't want to do that. But I would say this year, as we have a month until we move into that beautiful, and yes, it is beautiful, season of Lent. And it's, it's even more beautiful than like saying broccoli is beautiful, right? Like, yes, I know it's good for me, but, uh, but no, you can do it in the right way. And I would say this Sunday kind of gives us a nice launching pad to get ready for that season. And what do I mean by that? Well, we look at this gospel today, you know, where this, this initial, you know, interaction between Jesus and these first two disciples, these disciples of John the Baptist who follow after John's prompting, behold the Lamb of God. And what our Lord says to them, he says to all of us, and I think it's a question worth pondering and sitting with for the next couple of weeks before we move into Lent. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? Because I think for all of us, I mean, we can all feel that ache, right? That, that longing that just isn't satisfied. Like I said, the Christmas season, you know, has once again drawn to a close. And even if you got everything for Christmas that you wanted, if you were one of those fortunate people that on Christmas morning ran out and there's the Lexus with the big bow on it, right? Like, hooray! I mean, the commercials tell us, like, that is the height of joy, you know? Regardless of what number Lexus it is, okay, you've had it now for a couple weeks. And guess what? It hasn't satisfied every one of your deepest longings. And the thing is... We find that so many times in our life, right? That we think, okay, finally, I'm going to get to this point, and then, then I'll be fine. I'll be happy. I'll be satisfied. And we all know, I mean, that's just not the way that it works. And so our Lord looks at us and says, what are you looking for? And to be able to be in his presence and say, Lord, what am I looking for? What is it that I'm longing for? I'll tell you, I talked to my spiritual director a couple weeks ago. And just talking about different things. And he said, you know what you need to do? You need to go before the Blessed Sacrament and just be with our Lord and tell him what's going on in your heart. And don't do it in like a general way, right? Like you don't go to the doctor and just go, I hurt. Okay, yeah, he's not going to be able to really help you if you just go in there and say, I'm not feeling good. Okay, what's the problem? What is the issue? To look deep within your heart and say, this is what's going on. This is where I hurt. This is where I feel that longing that's just not being satisfied. 
Because the fact of the matter is, what we do here every day, and in particular every Sunday, it's not just a going through the motions. This isn't a social club, right? Pope Benedict put it this way in his beautiful first encyclical, Deus Caritas Est, God is love. He said this, being Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea, but the encounter with an event, a person, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive direction. And therein lies the beauty for us. Our life is made to have a decisive direction. And God himself wants to be in that, wants to like intimately be there with you so that you may be satisfied. As St. Augustine put it, our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. And then he's able to say something like, love God and do whatever you will. Because if we've got things in that right order, if that relationship with him is working well, everything else flows into place. Look at the way the gospel ends today as Andrew goes out and gets his brother. And Jesus looks at him and says, Simon, son of John. Fast forward 21 chapters. What's he going to say after the resurrection? Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I love you. Feed my sheep. If we can get things in that order, if we can look ahead to the resurrection, obviously Simon Peter, it's not like, wow, he just called me Kephas, Peter, Rocky. It's not like, okay, everything's in order now. I'm going to be fine. No, we know he's going to do some pretty bad stuff between here and there. But nevertheless, our Lord wants Simon Peter to find that rest for which he was made. But the beautiful thing is, he wants that for you and for me too. I would say this year as we get, you know, a Sunday that says, okay, one month from today is Ash Wednesday, it gives us the chance to look ahead to that time and say, what is it that I'm looking for? And as the church gives us the gifts of fasting and prayer and almsgiving, what do I want to do with those to more deeply find what it is that I'm looking for? Namely, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Where is it? that I've been holding him at arm's length? Where is it that I hurt and I haven't let him in as the divine physician to heal me? Where is it that I'm hearing that calling of my name, but I'm running off to Eli rather than to God? And to be able to say in these next couple weeks, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I'm about to head out on that pilgrimage to Fatima later tonight. So I won't be here next week. Our friend, Father Brian Becker, is going to be here to fill in for it for me. You'll love him if you don't know him. It'll be great. But then when I get back, I'm planning those next three Sundays before we hit Ash Wednesday to spend some time looking at fasting, at prayer, and at almsgiving. Because the big thing is, I'm hoping for all of us, myself included, We don't jump into Ash Wednesday and go, okay, I always give up beer. That's what I'll do. And then like three times during Ash Wednesday, I'll go, I need a beer. And I have a beer. And then I'm like, ah, and then all of a sudden it's Easter and it's Pentecost and we've gone through a whole nother year, right? That we don't want to just do that again. That ultimately to look at the fact that our Lord wants us to be fulfilled, wants us to find rest, wants us to avoid exactly what St. Paul is warning against for the Corinthians. Remember, the Corinth of his day was the Vegas of ours. What happened in Corinth stays in Corinth, right? And I'll tell you, it's a very, it's not a great translation today. They tried to G-rate it to the point that they took it out. What does it mean, avoid immorality? Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. That is so confusing. You know what immorality is here? I'll give you the Greek. It's going to make it PG. Ready? Immorality, porneia. I'll let you just kind of like figure that out for yourself. All right? That's what St. Paul is telling them to avoid. Why? They're giving their hearts to something else. They're going after things that are fleeting. When that happens, when we give our heart away to nothing, we find nothing in return. But our Lord doesn't want that for us. He looks at us just like he looks at these disciples today. What are you looking for? When we can say to him, where are you staying? And he says, come and you will see. We find more and more that he is the answer to the longing of our hearts. As we hear from the Vatican Council, Gaudium et Spes, God reveals man to himself. So my friends, I would say over the next couple of weeks, take some time to say to him, Lord, your servant is listening. To ask him for that grace to go there where maybe it hurts, where you've been disappointed, where you feel unsatisfied to say, what am I looking for? 
and to have him tell you more and more, to give you the idea of what is it in fasting and prayer and almsgiving that he's calling you to as we move towards that season that helps us to grow ever closer to him. Because my friends, it isn't just an ethical system. It's not just a set of teachings. What do we have in our faith? An encounter. An encounter with a God who looks at you and me and says, what are you looking for? And he knows us. He made us. He wants us to find rest, to be fulfilled, to have rest with him in this life and forever in the life to come. Praise be Jesus Christ.